the OPEC meeting in Vienna, there's likely to be a showdown the, among the usual suspects, as many news reports are calling them Iran and Saudi Arabia, specifically about oil output. Yes, um, good day. Um, yes, Iran um, has called, has already called on Saudi to pull back, if you will, the excess production, which they believe is responsible for the recent slump in prices. But the Saudis, uh, on their arrival here, um, have indicated that despite the Eurozone crisis and indeed the lower demand in Asia and even the U.S., it is not overly worried about the recent fall in prices. So while there may be tension between uh, Riyadh and Tehran at Thursday's meeting, indications today so far are that the organization is most likely to leave the uh, supply policy unchanged. All right, let's move on to Nigeria. The PIB bill finally almost coming to the flower of parliament and eventually getting passed. It's been stuck in the legislative machinery for quite a while now. Just give us a quick background. Why has it taken so long for this to happen? Well, the, well, the industry, you know, as you say, it's taken a long time. It's, uh, the industry has been almost held hostage, if you will, for almost, you know, for almost three years, um, putting oil production and investment um, in danger. The IOCs have largely been concerned about the tax implications um, imposed in the bill, but the bill, the draft that we have seen, has sort of been very relaxed on some of the, um, some of the, the tax-related issues, particularly for the deep water. In fact, the transparency issues have been, rather, have been criticized, but the companies, whilst having to sort of um, publicize royalties and their taxes, it's not necessarily so much in favor of, of the oil companies. You know, Nigeria needs to move forward with its bill. This bill, investments have stalled $40 billion alone from Shell in the last couple of years, and oil production is falling. And one of the criticisms, in fact, you, you mentioned this already about a taxation. The criticism from some people say it still appears to favor the international oil companies, despite the taxation measures seen to be trying to level that field. Well, I mean, the bill includes a plan to tax oil companies' profits at 20% for the deep water areas and 50% for the shallow and onshore areas. So it's not as if the, the companies are avoiding tax. But the other thing is that I need to bring this is Nigeria is Africa's biggest oil producer, yet still mm -hmm. has to import a lot of its gasoline and, imp and um, finished products because of the lack of refining capacity, the underinvestment and other shortcomings in that area. To the refining sector, yes. Um, the, the bill goes into a lot of detail about deregulating the downstream sector, which has been a contentious issue for several years in Nigeria because of the fuel subsidy and phasing out the, fuel, or the gradual uh, phasing out of the fuel subsidy. Um, the refining sector has been, in, has, has been stalled because there's been no investment. The oil companies have refused to invest in the current uh, refineries, and they have been plagued by mismanagement and the lack of... Um, maintenance, if you will, over the years. It doesn't actually make uh, provisions for major oil companies that operate in Nigeria to invest in these companies. So the refining sector is, it's not, doesn't go into detail, as, if you like, as to what it's going to do with the existing refineries. All right, but what detail it does have certainly is to do with the regulatory environment, creating a new regulator, five different agencies, but there's still questions lingering about what happens to the NNPC in this new regime. Yes, it talks about setting up, yes, it, it, it wants to set up a new national oil company and it wants it sort of to delist, delist over the next three years. But it doesn't really go into detail as to what will happen to the existing NNPC. Uh, does, it, does it remain? Does it, does it continue to sort of retain um, major contracts that it already holds with the uh, IOCs? Uh, what happens to the NOC in terms of assets and liabilities and what happens to the existing liabilities like the incorporated joint ventures. So it's very, very unclear as to how the NOC will work against the aged NNPC, if you will. All right. I don't know if I can sneak this in very quickly about the oil-bearing communities in the Delta getting a stake, but problems with implementation of that? The, yeah, you know, the, the, the government has been talking about this since 2009, the 10% equity provision. Um, it's a very positive development for the oil-bearing communities of the Niger Delta. But, what it, again, the bill doesn't actually make clear about how it's going to be implemented, how All the right. funds are going to be allocated, who's going to manage it. And we've had problems like this in the past. 
All right, we'll leave it there. Many thanks to Cynthia Moran, Chief Africa Correspondent at Platts.